Hello, you absolute champions. I really appreciate everyone who's been watching my videos. It's um, not a lot of you, but I have had some uh, some really nice messages and and um, and comments letting me know that, uh, that people are enjoying what I'm doing. I mean, some would like me to do more um, direct painting tutorials, and I would like to try my hand at video editing. So at some point in the future, I will try and do something like that. Um, I keep on thinking about everything that I've been learning during this non-metallic metal journey, with, of which this uh, model Amelda Braskov is the latest. And I feel like I've been learning a lot and have learned a lot just from um, just from really focusing on trying to make non-metallic metals be my focus. Um, it's it's interesting because you get this. Um, well, for me, I get this battle going on in my head where I I I always. If you've watched my videos, you'll you'll know I'm, I'm always thinking a lot about the focus of the model and where people are going to look and where I want them to look. And I, I'm trying to, in this model as well, especially, I, I've tried to take a step back from that and just paint the things. Uh, I mean, of course, I can't take though take my thoughts about that away from um, from my painting completely. So. It's it's a difficult thing to do, uh, but I've tried, and I don't know if it shows or not, but I hope it does. Uh, I mean, you can look at this piece, and and you can see that you know basically the non-metallic metal is the focal point. That you, you, I've painted it in a way that I want people to look at it. <sighs> So I've tried to take a, a step back and just uh, paint the individual elements as as good as I can do them without thinking so much about focus. But I mean, I, I still am because you can't just take away that whole side of my um, style and desire when it comes to painting, you know. So there, there is always still going to be a part of that. But I think that there is um, a good amount of that lacking in this piece and that that was um an idea that i actually specifically tried to incorporate for this for this model uh which was that if you look at it there's there's no uh exact lighting angle like i've i've tried to think about this recently and it, it's something that i basically i think came up with for this um for this model for the first time it is is to really just um paint everything like if you look at the gloves they're painted f for the light to be the best angle for them when you're looking at them uh, so when you're looking at her leg guard her, her le leg guard down here um, it's painted for you know this angle which is the best angle but it still it still works from other angles because if you're focusing on everything having its best angle forward it only really flares up when for, with the highlights when you turn to look at it from that angle but it still works from other angles uh, this might be really confusing i don't know how to really explain what i'm doing uh exactly but there is no i'm not really thinking about any specific light source like there's it's it's not here it's not there it's not front it's not back there's no shadow line there's no area of demarcation for each of the elements it's really just everything is painted as though it's got the its best foot forward and it's kind of like um the way i would think is the best to use for tabletop sort of painting even though this is painted to a uh, a showcase level or trying to at least because um, i want this to be one of my entries into the australian mini competition which is coming up this weekend uh 
So, yeah, that's an interesting thing to think about. I don't know how relevant it is to people, but yeah. then there's um, the other element of the balance. Like, the sword, her sword, I, I hadn't originally intended it to be as bright as it was, but before I had painted the sword, uh, the rest of the model was quite heavily focused downwards. Like, her legs and bright colours down there were really... Uh, capturing the attention so I went really bright with the sword got it really shining and so uh, I suppose that gives the perception well no not perception but um it gives a balance of the piece more focused towards the face which is really interesting to me because I hadn't intended this piece to have uh, a face focus, but I think it's actually there because the sword helps to drag everything upwards. And I guess that's a lucky coincidence and something that I feel like has potential to work and use with uh, non-metallic metal because it's always taking over the scene, you know. It takes over everything. It becomes the thing that people look at and the pe thing that people think about and go wow about is the metal rather than sort of taking in everything across the whole piece on its own um, or, you know, thinking of it as, as a whole. I think a lot of people see my style usually and, and see the stipples because I use stipples a lot. If you look closely at this model, I've deliberately tried to uh, not use stipples at all. The whole thing, usually, you know, I might have gone stipples on the cloak, but no, they're up and down brush strokes. No stipples in the in the armor. It's side to sides. I mean, and it's close. It can be. It's close looking to stipples because if you look, you can see the the brush strokes are side to side or up and down to give it a little bit of a sense of brush metal. You can't really see it until you get up that close. And I mean, this sort of stuff, that texture, you can't see that with the naked eye. That's just. I don't know, that's just from the paint and the, the plastic itself, I suppose, and the primer, the spray primer probably has a big big thing to do with that, but my painting was, yeah, no stipples this time, which was fun. And I, I think I will try to do this more, like um, use stipples more strategically as part of a texture. This is just one of those uh, GW bases from Age of Sigma, which I've added a few more bricks and blocks onto, sculpted and just sitting on a, um, a tarot model maker uh, plinth. And um, I've tried to paint it in a way so that it's a, it's a bit colder on, that, on the periphery and use the, the color of the the stone to spotlight her a little bit. Not that she needs that much spotlighting because look how much white and brightness is on her when you, you've got the whole thing. Um, but, yeah, still, it's it's cool to try and, you know, use little things here and there for stuff like that. So, that's cool. I really enjoyed this model and um, if anyone else has seen it, uh, you might see some similarities between my version here and Lucas Wiggering's version of this, which uh, was a big a big inspiration for me in, on this model. I really enjoyed looking at his when he released it, and it was actually probably the person who inspired me to, to grab this model and paint it, because I hadn't purchased it until I saw his, and I thought, yeah, that's right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something like that. So it's not exact, but it's close. And the colors that I picked, um, <laughs> orange and blue they're abnormal and I think most people probably wouldn't think of them to fit with this model but I feel like they've worked I picked them mostly because I wanted to see if I could make them work um, see if something that was close to garish would come together and and fit during the the painting process I actually painted that little sash around her arm uh, more of a bright green colour, but it was just one too many steps in towards garish with that. So yeah, I think that, that about covers everything for this model. I've got another 
another couple of models that I finished painting in recent times that I haven't shown yet because I, I want to show them for the first time at the competition on the weekend. So maybe I'll release those photos and video if I have time to film for them um, during the weekend. But probably it, will be ne it won't be until next week because I, I won't have the time. Thanks for watching Absolute Legends. Uh, and I hope you found something useful in my blabbing and talking. And I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.